This is the second video in the Edexcel C3 revision tutorial series. Today we'll be looking at hard and soft water as well as how we can remove hard water. Here we have various items that have been hung at the mouth of a cave. We can see that there is water dripping down off of the surface and is falling onto the objects. The objects themselves have been covered by the minerals that are found in the hard water that is dripping down through the rocks. In this video we will look at the differences between temporary and permanent hard water. We will look at how we can remove temporary hardness via boiling. We will look at the problems caused by hard water and the benefits of soft water. And then finally how permanent hard water can be softened using an ion exchange resin. As I'm sure you're aware in caves we get these amazing cave formations made up of stalagmites and stalactites. Stalactites are columns of rock that come down from the ceiling, they hang tightly to the ceiling and we have stalagmites that are mighty and grow up from the ground. These columns are caused by dripping water. The water contains different mineral ions which get deposited onto the surface and gradually build up both down from the ceiling and up from the floor. As this video will be focusing on hard and soft water, just to start with some amazing facts about water. So 95% of your body mass is water, 94% in women. Dinosaurs would have drunk the same water that we do, as it has been recycled. It dissolves more substances than any other liquid. Most ionic substances are soluble, as we looked at in the previous video. Around 75% of the world's surface is made of water, but to feel thirsty, we only need to lose about 1% of our total body. 5,000 children die every day due to not having access to the clean drinking water. And on average, in the West, we use 200 to 300 litres of water every day. So what are hard and soft water? Well, hard water is water that contains lots of dissolved ions, especially magnesium and calcium that come from the contact with the rocks. When it reacts with soap, it will then form scum. The scum is an unuseful white precipitate that forms instead of lather when the hard water comes into contact with soap. However, hard water can have some advantages. So the dissolved ions within the hard water are often very good for us and they help reduce the development of heart disease. However, as we said, we get this scum forming, more soap is required to form a lather and the minerals inside the hard water can be deposited onto surfaces leading to issues with lime scale. So it's more expensive equipment is going to wear out quicker. There are two types of hard water we need to know, which is permanent and temporary. We will look at the difference between these. First, we will look at temporary hard water. Temporary hard water, as its name suggests, is a version of hard water that is easy to remove. Temporary hard water contains hydrogen carbonate ions, HCO3 minuses. These are formed when slightly acidic rain reacts with calcium or magnesium carbonate in rocks. However, we can boil this water to soften it up. So step one, the hydrogen carbonate ions decompose to produce carbonate ions. They go through a thermal decomposition, as we have previously looked at in C2. These carbonate ions then react with the calcium and magnesium ions to form the precipitates. The overall reaction for calcium hydrogen carbonate can be seen now. The calcium hydrogen carbonate reacts to form calcium carbonate and water and carbon dioxide. However, this calcium carbonate precipitate that is formed is the lime scale that forms inside the kettle. It is an insoluble salt and over time can cause large amounts of damage to the inside of the kettle. Boiling will have no effect on permanent hard water 
as it will not affect the sulfate ion. Permanent hard water, on the other hand, is hard water that cannot be softened via boiling. This is because it contains sodium or magnesium sulfate. Both of these ions dissolve in water. Magnesium sulfate completely dissolves. Calcium sulfate partially dissolves, making the water slightly cloudy. So the question, therefore, is how can we remove permanent hardness? Well, simply put, we need a way to remove the calcium and magnesium ions. Before we look at how to remove our permanent hardness, we will have a very quick look at how water hardness is measured. In order to measure water hardness, we can take different samples and add drops of soap to them. We can then see how quickly we can form a lather of the soap. So here we have three water samples, A, B and C, with ratings before and after boiling. So if we take our first question, which, is, which sample is the soft water, we can see that C requires very few drops to form a lather both before and after boiling. This must mean that water sample C is our soft water sample. The next sample we are asked to find is the sample of temporary hard water. As we have already looked at, temporary hard water can be softened via boiling. Therefore, water sample B, which shows that lots of drops are required before boiling, but only a small amount after boiling in order to form the lather. This means that water sample B must be our temporary hard water sample. This leaves us with sample A which is our permanent hard water sample, as there is no change in the number of drops of soap required to form a lather before or after boiling. This means that boiling has had no effect on the hardness of the water. In order to remove our permanent water hardness, we need to use an ion exchange column. This is a column that contains a special resin to swap the calcium and magnesium ions for sodium or hydrogen ions. This is how many commercial water softeners work, such as those you may have in your house. Inside our iron exchange column, we have our special resin, which is held in place. We will look at the resin in more detail on the next slide. It has lots of sodium ions available for exchange. The hard water containing the calcium and magnesium ions enters the top of the column. The calcium and magnesium ions are attracted to the resin where they are exchanged for the sodium ions. The sodium ions then exit down the bottom of the iron exchange column with the water. As the filtered water no longer contains the calcium or magnesium ions, it has been successfully softened. The resin itself is a solid polymer that's insoluble in water. It is a structure of sites on its surface which trap and release the ions. These are the resin beads here. The trapping of the ions takes place only when other ions are released, therefore the process is called ion exchange. The calcium and magnesium ions are therefore trapped by the resin. This means that the resin over time will lose its effectiveness. It can then be replaced or refreshed by cleaning. This process works as sodium is more reactive than calcium or magnesium. Therefore, we can carry out a displacement reaction. It is also important to remember that the use of an ion exchange column will remove hardness that is both permanent and temporary, so therefore can be used for both forms of hard water, whereas via boiling can only be used to remove temporary. Here are three example exam questions for water hardness. First of all, we have to describe the differences between permanent and temporary hardness. Secondly, why does iron exchange soften all types of water, whilst boiling only removes temporary hardness? And after an iron exchange column has been used for some time, the water coming out of it remains hard. Explain why this happens and what could be done to correct it.
I want you to pause the video at this point and answer the three questions. For question one, the differences between permanent and temporary hardness. Permanent hardness is caused by magnesium and calcium sulfates and can only be removed via ion exchange columns, whereas temporary hardness is caused via calcium hydrogen carbonate and can be removed via boiling. An iron exchange column will soften all types of water because it is able to exchange the calcium ions that are found in both permanent and temporary hard water for sodium ions, therefore softening the water, whereas boiling will only remove temporary hardness as it causes the calcium hydrogen carbonate to decompose to insoluble calcium carbonate but will have no effect on the sulfate ions. And finally, the iron exchange column will stop working over time as all of the sodium ions in the resin will have been exchanged for calcium and magnesium ions. This can be corrected via either replacing the iron exchange column or via refreshing the iron exchange column, which means to rinse out the, both the magnesium and calcium ions and replace them with sodium ions so that the resin will work again. This is the end of the second video in the Edexcel C2 revision tutorial series. In the next lesson, we will be looking at how to measure amounts as well as how to calculate the concentrations of solutions and looking at moles.